so I just want to talk a little bit about uh, painting today. Uh, someone asked uh, me to share a few tips about painting. Uh, I'm by no means uh, an expert, but I will uh, share a few uh, tips with you that I've learned from other people. Um, I like to do uh, a lot of airbrushing. I find that it's uh, a lot more natural. I use this here. The uh, Sotar 2020, amazing uh, airbrush for fine detailed work. Uh, I would definitely recommend this. I mean, airbrushing is one of those things where you kind of have to, you know, try different things, see what you like. But for me, awesome airbrush, love it. So, anyway, I'm just going to go through a couple of tips here. I'm going to use this big guy right here. This is a 1 uh, one and 19th scale um, Jurassic Park Brachiosaurus. It's made by a company called Horizon. They're no longer in business. This, uh, this kit is very, very rare. But uh, I'll just quickly go over what I did with them. So, first of all, I used a um, primer. Um, Krylon is actually what I use. Um, with that, you got to make sure that it's a lighter color. Well, at least for me, anyway, I bought um, a gray primer from Krylon, and it was uh, pretty dark. So I re, I went and got white, and I resprayed it with a white, so it was easier for uh, when I put on the details later on. So gave it a dose of that. It dries in 10 minutes. I leave it sit for longer than that. And, and check it over, make sure. Sometimes you got to do it a couple times because, especially in a big model like this, you got to tilt it and spray underneath and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was the first thing I did. Um, so, th after that, I decide what, uh, what I want to use for colors. Now, I use Tamaya because Tamaya has a lot of army colors, flat army colors, and that's good for dinosaurs because dinosaurs obviously weren't shiny, and those grays and browns and greens, you know, those earth tones, especially for these big sauropods, make sense. Um, so I chose, I think, about four or five colors for this. I can't remember now because it has been a while. I start off the yeah, Part underneath here. Now this is um, um, an earth tone, and then the second tone is similar. It's a similar color, but it had a little more yellow into it. So I lay down the earth tone, pretty heavy, not totally though, a little heavy. Then I kind of highlight with my more yellow color, and uh, after I do that, then I start with my greens. So I did. Um, I chose my first color, like an olive green color, and uh, just kind of give it a little dose. Now the key is that I learned, and I had a hard time with this for a long time, was, you know, just spraying up close, covering it, soaking it in paint, and it was a mess, you know, and I didn't understand anything about airbrushing. I had like a, a patch, single action airbrush, didn't understand what I was doing. So, anyway, what actually works better is to spray a lot less paint and not you know you know kind of go like this and 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 use the primer like highlights so for instance <coughs> sorry in here and in a couple of these spots I just sprayed the green a lot lighter so the white almost comes through so it actually looks like a lighter green but it's not it's the same green I just use my airbrush at different distances and stuff like that. So in here I make the green heavier and uh, use the actual light that's hitting it as my guide. And that actually saves you a lot of mixing different colors and going along. Now the, the better you get, and I'm certainly not there yet, the more layers you put on it. Like uh, some of the painters I know, they're laying down many, many, many layers. Uh, you know, with slightly different colors, and the more you do that, the more it brings it to life. But for me, I kind of do it this way. Uh, now there still is a couple of different greens. After I did that, then I came with a little darker green, went in here, 
you know. It went again in here, a little bit here, stuff like that. If you go up near the top, you know, usually along the vertebrae, I usually darken it right up there. You know, it just it brings it to life. Now, when you're done doing that, the first thing you should do, let me see if I can just reach behind here, grab these guys. This is a tester's dull coat. Very important. And I learned this the hard way too. You gotta spray. You gotta spray what you've done. If you like what you've done, then you spray it because you seal it before you go on to anything else. If you don't do that, well, I'll explain in a minute what happens. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> and it can uh, cost you a lot of time in reworking. So, the next step, after you've sprayed, to kind of blend it together because I mean it, it looks good with an airbrush. An airbrush blends naturally and it looks good but it's not quite there. And this tip uh, a couple of my buddies explained to me best thing ever. Like mind blowing. Is this glazing medium from Liquitex. I'm sure there's other brands you can get but this one works really well. And you take this and put it in a cup and then you mix it with a color that's compatible with this. So in this case I did like a really really dark like a black green color and I mixed it together and I just I slopped it on here and you in a model this big you can't do the whole thing but you, like for instance the neck put it all over the neck area you leave it sit for a couple of minutes then you wipe it off with a cloth um, and it just and it stays in all these little folds of skin and it just brings the whole thing out and blends these patterns and colors together like it's it's amazing I mean and I know there's many of those washes and dry brushing and all those things and I'm not uh, really that good at all those yet like I said I'm just learning and stuff like that so I just kind of wanted to pass on tips to everybody but that is amazing it works so well so well now if you haven't done this first though and you do that and you go to wipe it off you'll wipe off all of this paint. And I did that with my T-Rex and wiped it right down to the primer. And <laughs> wow, what a job reworking that. It was not, uh, it was not cool. So, but anyway, the, those are a few tips that I know, you know, and the only other tip that I can give you is take your time. You know, and that was, that's the hardest part for me to learn because I love to just, uh, you know, I get this, I want to build it, I want to paint it in a day, I want it up on the, you know, I want it up on my shelf, but you can't do it like that. I mean, they're pros, Ken. Um, I've just seen a couple of people on Facebook posting stuff that they painted in like a couple of days, but I mean, they've been painting probably a hundred dinosaurs. Like, it's insane. You know, someday that's where I want to be, but right now I'm just, you know, I'm just learning, and that's the cool thing about sculpting and, and model kit building and painting and diorama building it's it's something that evolves I mean you never you're never there I mean you're you're good but you're always learning some new tip some different way of doing things so anyway I just thought I would share this little video again the airbrush I use is a Sotar 2020 it's made by Badger really good stuff for my paints, I use Tamaya, and I use other stuff. So, you know, and I may do a video on like mixing paints and a way you can do craft paints and stuff like that uh, shortly. But for now, and uh, Dull Coat by Kester's works great. I like it better than the Krylon sealer, so it, it's worth using this glazing medium for your glazes works really good. Um, and uh, that's about it. Anyway, I should have another video posted soon. Hope you enjoyed this one.